Welcome. This is the Pipeline Help Project of the SheCode Africa Contributhon. It's the 21st of April, 2022. Great to be here together. Uh, topics that I had on my list, I believe we had talked about um, going through steps. So last time we went through a steps um, interactively from the oh, interactively from the GitHub UI. And this time I think we talked about, we may want to consider doing steps from a command line in development mode. Um, Afi and, and Sophia, does that match with what you were thinking we would approach? Or Nafisa, help me, help me likewise. Do those two things sound like good, good steps or is there something else we need to put on the agenda first? I guess we should probably put questions and answers. If you have questions, let's be sure we answer those first. Sorry, Nafisa, I, heard, I had difficulty Hello? hearing you. Could you say that again? I think this is good for me. I don't know about Sophia and Afi. Okay. Um, um, for me, uh, I really don't have much questions. I just um, um, have something to say about what I worked on. It's not necessarily a question, it's just like oh. my discovery. Yeah. That's, that's a very good one. So progress reports and status discussion. I like that one, yes. That's very good. Let's put that first on the list. So Sophia, why don't we go ahead with, with that? I'll take, do you, want to, do you want to share your screen? Or are you okay if you just describe it? What, what would you prefer? What works best for you? Um, I would just, I would just talk. Okay, go uh, ahead. Okay, yeah. So uh, I was able to finish uh, the first B, um, where is the title, sorry the preparation for pipeline experience talks. So it was actually interesting because um, the meeting we had the last time really, really helped. Although the, the last meeting, I was very confused about the um, what we are actually doing. But when I finished the um, talks under the preparation and pipeline experience, I was able to get like a real understanding of what we are doing. So, um, and yes, you're actually right. The um, the Jenkins um, help, um, sorry, let me get that. The um, build step, the app, the, those um, apps or something, sorry, guide um, in the local, in my local Jenkins had um, fewer parameters than the one in the website. And, it was actually very interesting. I, I also did add a lot of fun with um, the um, pipeline script generator. Generator. I don't know why I keep calling it pipeline script generator. <laughs> but I really had um, a lot of fun. Um, although I wish I could just um, create like an entire pipeline on one go instead of having to go back and forth. Um, so that was what I did. And uh, I'm just trying to say, I've actually gotten a full understanding of what the tax is all about. Good, well, and, and that finding, finding those complications is a, is a good thing for us because you're, you're discovering mm -hmm. things that other users as their brand new starting see as well. And it helps you when you see Oh, hey, the build step, and and just so everyone everyone understands, this is what what um, what Sophia was talking about. So the pipeline build step is this thing right here, and what Sophia is describing. Now, I admit it, this is very tiny text. I'm not expecting you'll read the text, but what she sees is is one we highlight. When I click some of these things, they give me nothing useful. They just say hardly useful. It's got a name, there, there's a name parameter, it's a string, a baseline parameter, it's a string. No hint, how do you use it? Why do you use it? When do you use it? 
Boolean param. Okay, I would have guessed there'd be a value, sure, and it would be a Boolean. That makes sense. But but really, that's all the and these kinds of things just aren't as helpful as people need when they're doing work in pipeline. And so now what, what she observed was that when she's running her local Jenkins, instead of what this thing does, which is shows every possible plugin, if you install them all, you would have this, this very long list. What she saw was a much shorter list that's manageable, but still contains many things that are empty. Did I describe that correctly, Sophia? Exactly, exactly. So it's, it's her local copy is, is, is better tuned to her needs because it only shows the information about her installed plugins, but it's still not helpful in the sense that the information isn't there. Good, okay, thanks, thanks, Sophia, continue. Oh, that's, that's actually all. <laughs> oh, okay, great, all right. Well, that's, that's excellent, thank you very much. All right, Afi, did you want to did you want to share how you're how you're doing and how you're feeling Hi. things barriers you may have encountered? Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Am I audible? Yes, sure okay. can. Great, great. So I also went through the steps. I realized that I wasn't marking them as I was going, so I went back to market. Currently, I'm on the step to upload the pipeline build step plugin. Um, I realized that there was something wrong with my Maven. So I went back to reinstall it. So I had to do the step four, the compiling the plugin and then confirming the output. So that's what I got to. Um, one minute, something else. Yeah, so with the pipeline syntax and um, snippet generator, I saw that there are certain, um, I, should I say inconsistencies, like there were smaller ones like on my side. So I also went to like the main website to go and check um, the missing um, information or things that could be, um, that we could possibly add to it. Um, I also saw in the docs that um, there were steps for things like checkout, JUnit, and echo and input. I also had a look at that. Um, uh, also for the building of the Java app with Maven, I started with it, but I'm currently fixing some WSL issues. Um, yeah, I'm also done with that. So that's that's pretty much for my update. But the other things, I didn't have like challenges. I didn't have it like too difficult. So that's what I've gotten to so far. Excellent. Yeah. Very good. And 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 those those are exactly the kinds of things we hoped you would experience in that initial initial task list. So Bruno, for your info, what we did is we constructed a series of steps that are broken down. Okay, in this particular document, there's a task to get started preparing a pipeline. So create a Jenkins pipeline. And, and that's important because they needed context. What does it mean to, to, to do a pipeline in Jenkins? In order to make the changes they'll eventually need to make, they've got to be able to build a Jenkins plugin. So we have this task, compile a Jenkins plugin from source, and then make a change to that plugin and watch that the change you made is visible in your local Jenkins. Uh, so this is really where we're helping them become Jenkins plugin developers by doing these tasks. Then our ultimate destination is this one where we say, we want them to be able to insert some help that will help a user of, as a mythical example, agent parameter. They find a way to say, or let's change a more basic one, Boolean param that says why you would use Boolean, how you use it, and give some pointers about this is how you interact with it. So those kinds of things are what these initial tasks were trying to do. Very good. All right. So Sophia or Afi, any, any other things that you wanted to share here or concerns you had as you were going through those initial experiences? Um, for me, I actually did add issue using Blue Ocean to um, create a pipeline, uh, a Jenkins file. So um, I needed to have tools like Maven and 
JDK in my pipeline and um, I couldn't um, do it with Blue Ocean. So I had to manually, I had to go to GitHub and edit the file and include the, um, the tools that I needed for um, the pipeline in order for me to um, actually continue building it. So it was really, really stressful adding tools to um, using Blue Ocean. Good, yeah, so configure, configure a JDK, configure, configure a build tool, in this case, Maven, And, and all of that dealing in the context, in the context of your working computer. Good, okay. Now, do you, I, I hadn't checked with either of you, do you have Docker available mm -hmm. on your computers? And help me remember, Sophia, are you running on Mac OS, Linux or Windows? I'm running on Mac OS and okay. I'm running my Jenkins locally, I'm not using Docker. Okay, so and so you you answered one of my questions. You have you have Docker, and is your Mac OS an, an AMD sixty four, so an Intel architecture, or is it an ARM architecture? I we don't know. It's M one. That is what I know. Oh, it's a, it's it's an M one. Okay, so that answers you answered it. That's ARM. Okay, so on an M one. Okay, so using using Docker. Okay, so Mac Mac OS on an M one using Docker to, and you're running your Jenkins from inside Docker, or are you running Jenkins locally with just J Java minus jar Jenkins.org? I'm running Jenkins locally. Okay, all right. Good, all right. Now you, you, you're warming Bruno's heart because he likes the ARM processor architecture. Good choice. That's great. All right, so running Jenkins locally, but you have Docker available. Mm, no, I don't have actually. Oh, you do Docker. not have, okay, no Docker. Got it, all right. Okay, good. Docker is available for the M1, but it would, it would, you would then end up using a different image. You would use ARM images instead of using Intel images. So good, good to know, okay. And Afi, are you on Windows? Do I remember correctly? Yeah. Yes, I am. So I also installed, um, I have Docker, but I have to like reset up the Docker because of my WSL. That's like for Windows. And yes, my Jenkins is also running locally. Okay, good. All right. So that means we've got at least since you've got WSL, Windows subsystem for Linux, and yes. Sophia's got Mac OS, we've got uh, at least a relatively common base where the two of you have some access to Linux to Unix style commands. And, and so we can use those good. Very good. All right. Excellent. Any, any other concerns before we go on from the progress reports to the question and answer section? Mm, not for me. Okay. All right, let's see. So, so we had, and for, I guess, next question then is, are there topics you wanted to ask questions about? If not, we could, we could look at next steps on some tasks and, and show and talk about them as we go through them together. Yeah, that'll be great. Okay. All right. So the, the steps that, now, if I remember correctly, you've both been through the steps to build the Jenkins plugin. Or not yet, that's, that's still on your list. Not yet, I, I have okay. cloned it, um, but I've not yet, um, I've cloned it, I've not yet um, worked. Okay, good, so, yeah. so if you're okay with it, then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually go through those steps and I wonder if it's easier for us if we'll, we do, do those, yeah, let's just do those steps together if you're okay with that. I'm gonna show you on my Windows computer, but the steps I'll take, I think will be reasonably portable to, to your Mac OS and, 
and to the Windows computer as well. So is that text big enough? Do I need to make the text bigger in that window? It's okay for me. Okay, great, all right. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to, oh, you know what? Maybe I've got a better way to do it. Have either of you used the GH command yet? No. Okay, all right, well, no, so let's. Let's start with this one first then. Let's, let, we'll do it, get, get command line get first. And on Saturday at the introduction session that we're doing, that I'm doing this Saturday, um, I'll, I'll talk about the GH command as well. But so, oops, what just happened? My screen just went dark. Okay, something, I apologize. All of my screens just went blank. Can you still hear me? Yes, you can. That's that's no help. I can't see anything. Okay. Hmm. What have I done? I press some key sequence, and now my screen literally is absolutely dark. This is terrible. I am sincerely sorry. Um, I can wave at you, and are you seeing my screen being shared? Yeah, your screen is showing, it's just so, 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 oh, but it is for, okay. So I probably am going to have to restart my computer. That may cause the meeting to end. I apologize. This has never happened um, to me before. Um, I think Uno shared something. He said Control Q or Control S. Control S. Yeah. Control Q, Control N. No. No, I am... I am truly without video on my screen at all. I will restart my computer and be back shortly. If the meeting ends, I apologize. Rejoin at the same URL. I'll be back. Okay. Oh, hey, I'm back. Okay, can you can you still hear me? Sophia, yes. can you? Okay, good. So I didn't have to restart after apparently pushing the power button without actually pressing it long enough to restart. Fixed my problem. Sorry for the embarrassment. Let's go ahead with what we were going to. Okay, this window. Okay, is now responding. So git, so first, git clone, and I need the repository URL. So let's go find that build step plugin. And grab this repository URL, and then I'm just gonna paste it here. So this is cloning the local copy and then pipeline build step plugin. Now I need to check my Java version and I have 11.0.14.1, that's a good choice. And I need to check my Maven version. Okay, and that's 3.8.4, which is also fine. So back to the steps that were in our list, it talked about forking it, cloning it, and then compiling it. And so I'm just gonna use this step to compile it. And this step will actually compile it and skip executing the automated tests. And the reason for that is it's faster to compile without running the tests. Now, in general, we like to run tests. Tests are a good thing. But in this particular case, for purposes of our exercise today, it'll be simpler if we don't run the test for right now. So it's going to start giving me, telling me all sorts of things about 
downloading a bunch of dependencies that it needs from various places that help me build this particular plugin. And it'll take a little bit of time to do this. So you could do this same thing. You don't necessarily even have to use the pipeline build step. It just happens that these instructions are focused on the pipeline build step to get you started. Let's see, and I see some chat messages here. Oh, <laughs> all right. Got it. Okay. So I've built the plugin. And what you'll see is target. And there's pipeline build step.htpi. So compile it. And we saw the output that it expected. And now this says, okay, upload this, this to my local copy of Jenkins. In my local copy of Jenkins, so my copy of Jenkins is actually running here. It happens to be running on this, this particular thing. And the way I upload a plugin to my copy of Jenkins is I go to manage Jenkins, manage plugins, advanced, and now there is a choose. So notice it says all sorts of things about proxy, ignore that, about deploy plugin, this is the one I want. So I'm going to choose a file and now I've got to go find it and it's in hub plugins. And here, target and pipeline build step.hpi. So you see that I've chosen the file it's going to offer, okay, do you want to do that? This is the file it's going to do. I'm going to press the deploy button. Now it will tell me, okay, I'm not going to deploy unless, until you actually, because I already had it installed, I have to restart Jenkins to get the next. So I'm going to click restart Jenkins. And what this will do is now, yeah, and my Jenkins was not too busy, so that's good. So now it's going to restart. So reminder of the steps I took there, I cloned the repository. I compiled the plugin and then I uploaded it. And this upload was to my local Jenkins. So my local Jenkins will now have the new version of that pipeline build step. And okay, my, my local Jenkins has 20 or so agents connected and a thousand or more jobs. So it's a little busy. It'll be a, a minute or two. Oh yeah, uh, Mark. Yes. Yeah, I would love to know what the agents like are for. I remember seeing it. Um, I think when I was uploading a script, something like that's when I was creating the pipelines. Very good question. Yeah, so if, if you go to Jenkins.io and you can, there's a page called using Jenkins agents that describes what an agent is and has this three minute video tutorial that introduces you to the concept of an agent. And, and so by all means, watch that video and get, get some idea of, hey, this is why you'd use an agent and this is how it would help you. And these are the kind of things we can do with an agent. So in, in my case, for example, I use agents. I've got agents like this one right here, Pi 4B, which happens to be a Raspberry Pi 4 with eight gigabytes of memory that I use so that I can be sure that my code runs on a particular CPU architecture. I've also got agents like this one that runs a, or here, let's pick this one this one that runs a different CPU architecture and different operating system. And each of those is to, to help me be sure that things work well. So agents are a way of doing things variably. I wanna do them on different places with different computers and they're ways to do things that, so that I don't have to use the controller directly. Did, did that answer your question, Afi? Yeah, it did, thank you. 
Okay. So, so I've finished that upload process. You remember we were, the process we were doing is we wanted to upload the build step and I should see it in the installed list of plugins. So when I go to installed and I type build step, there's build. And now if I look down here, let's see which and which plugin provides the build step. I have to remember this. The plugin is pipeline build step. Okay. So let's look for pipeline build step. There it is. Okay, good. And notice, notice what this tells me. Oh, shouldn't have pressed that. Notice what it says here. So it's showing the version number is 2.18 dash snapshot private some funny character string mark E. That's my username. And this is telling me, oh, I'm using my own local build. So I have seen that I, I have now, if I'd been smart, I would have shown it to you beforehand because beforehand you would have seen that my pipeline build step was running 2.17 instead of this 2.18 snapshot. So okay, the idea is- Mark? Yes, Bruno. Sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt, but I have a question. What about uh, the gray part, you know, with the check mark? Why does a parallel test executor plugin has um, dark, Blue uh, checkbox and yours is great. Very good question. Okay, so so and let's hover over it to see. So so you're asking about this check mark here or the yep. one here. And when I hover over it, it will tell me what's going on. So so when I hover over the darkened check mark, it says what that check mark is. It would allow me to disable the plugin. So when I click it, it disables it. But I hover over this one and I can't disable it because this plugin is required by other plugins that I have enabled. And if I were to disable this one, I would disable those other plugins. So for instance, the, so did that answer your question, Bruno? Perfectly, thank you. All right, so, so and, and that's, that's already a, an interesting part of, of the Jenkins world is plugins can depend on other plugins and they often do. Uh, there are there are plugins that provide base functionality. Other plugin plugins then use that base functionality and, and depend on that plugin. Good, very good question. Thank you. Okay, so so we've taken that next step of upload the pipeline build step plugin. Now the next challenge is let's let's find and this is where we we should have okay this this step is missing something right because we should have looked at the help on my local jenkins maybe i can have the two of you guide me on this one i think in order to see the pipeline help what but what we should do is let's open up the pipeline syntax, I think that's the place where we can get pipeline help, right? And we're going to go to build. And now in the pipeline, let's see, no, it was, that's not it. Oh, here we go, parameters. And no, because this takes me to the general build step. Help me out here, Sophia. I think you would you had just recently found the online help and seen that it was correctly different than than what was visible elsewhere. I'm not seeing what I was expecting to see here. Sorry, go ahead, Sophia. <laughs> I couldn't navigate from this from my from my local to the um yeah. yeah so and that what i was looking for is there is a way to get access to well let's let's just keep going on this so so already we can see here is here is the online help for this this plugin it says when i click the question mark it tells me describes what this is and 
click that question mark and it says, whoops, we just found a bug there. Let's, let's hide this just a minute and be sure we can see that correctly. So when I click project to build, yeah, here it is, name of a downstream job to build. So this is the help for it. And so now what we want to do based on those steps is we want to modify some of some help somewhere in this file, in this plugin and see that we can change it. So back to where we were. Let's pick, how about, let's pick even the top level thing just for now. Trigger a new build for a given job. So I want to find that text, modify it, compile a new copy of the plugin, upload it, and then we're going to see that that change was, is visible. So that's the goal here is to be sure that you're comfortable making changes and seeing that the changes are visible to you. So the way I find that text is with this. I like the git grep command because it really does a nice job of finding things. Okay, so. And what that told me is the file that has that text in it is right here. Sorry for the purple background. That's their purple text. That's really terribly hard to read. Let's open that file. Let's see, and the easiest way is probably just for me to navigate it in my file explorer. So hub plugins, pipeline build step, and then the, the location was source main resources, source main resources, org, Jenkins CI, workflow. And now there are, if you're a Visual Studio Code user, there are better ways to do this. I'm not skilled with Visual Studio Code, but that's certainly one technique you can use to find things. Build trigger step, help.html. So here, oops, we want to edit that file. Give me notepad. Come on, where is my notepad? There it is, notepad. Use the simplest stone knife editor possible. Okay, here is the text for that. Trigger a new build for a given job that Mark Waite decided he wanted. All right, no, you would never commit such a thing, but <laughs> yeah. this, this is a good way to illustrate what we what we want to do so here we go trigger a new new build for a given job so i've now done that i've saved it i'm going to recompile it and then i'll upload it to jenkins and restart jenkins and we should see that as the new help Clearly, I need to get an M1. This, this would be much faster on a, on a Mac. That, that I, I would like that a lot. Unfortunately, I've never used a Mac before. Okay, oh, so. You don't have to. There is a Linux distribution called Azahi Linux, which works perfectly on the Mac M1. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> oh, very nice. Okay, I wasn't aware that anybody done a Linux port to M1. That's cool. Okay, yes, now let's, let's do our upload here. So we were here. Again, I go to manage Jenkins, manage plugins, advanced, and choose a file. And thankfully, it remembered the location. So I pick pipeline build step.hpi. Now, this will, should give me a new, oh, it may actually not give me a new number because I didn't commit anything. We'll have to see. It may be the same thing as before, but we should see my, my help the next time this restarts. 
So Jenkins is restarting. So we've been through, we've been through the steps of, oh, I, I, shame on me. Here, I didn't follow my own directions. Let's follow, follow the directions. While that's restarting, my apologies. When working with Git, please always create a new branch. First thing you do, anytime you make a change, create yourself a new branch. The reason it's a lot easier to track things in Git if you're using a branch. So we look at the changes that I have pending. There's my brand new, very valuable help text. So this talks about how you find that text. And then I did make a small but noticeable change. And if we look at Git status, you'll see that it says, here's a modified file. Then I compiled it, we've uploaded it. Now, if we're lucky, it's here and ready. And we, we should now be able to look at the pipeline syntax generator for build. When I click this question mark, there it is. Congrats. <laughs> yes. So, but the idea here is this kind of a round trip where you make a change and you may even commit it. So I could, for instance, say git commit add mark weights uh, help. Now I've, I've added mine on top of what's all, what was already there. Great. That shows that I know how to get changes into my local Jenkins. And getting them into my local Jenkins is, is the first step towards being able to make improvements. Now this last step is to, to throw away all the things that I just did. And I have to do a little bit more because I did a separate branch, but. And what was the name of our branch? It was change some help. So I'm going to delete the branch, change some help just because I don't need it. We don't need Mark Waits special thing. Questions so far on what we've done. other than the possible terror factor of, wow, okay, that was a bunch of steps. And practically speaking, you should expect that there will probably be surprises or problems that you'll encounter at any one of those steps. If you do, ask questions in Slack and we'll, we'll help you through. We, we, we know that this is, this is a new thing for you. And just like compiling with Maven, maybe something that you haven't done a lot before, Likewise, modifying these, finding and modifying online help may also be something unfamiliar. It's okay, we're happy to assist. Okay. Okay. So now the, 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 next, the next piece of this is the, hey, let's find and insert something into the, the I into the actual place where we need the help. So I had created long ago a, a page that tracks, well, okay, this page gives us feedback on Jenkins documentation. You don't need to look at it other, unless you want to be scared from people saying very harsh things about how much they would like more documentation. Don't, don't be intimidated by it. It's just, yes, they're sometimes very blunt with us about, hey, it's not well enough documented. But if we look at, let's see, and this table right here is a place where, so this is inside, this is a second tab of this sheet, shows the plugins that have lots and lots and lots of feedback complaining. And if we look at the counts down at the very bottom is the, the most complaints. Pipeline build step. Yeah, that's why I picked that one first. Uh, lots and lots of give me more, please give me more. SCM, 
one of the plugins I maintain is Git, the Git SCM plugin is the next on the list uh, for people wanting more than Git itself. People want more, more help. Any one of those is a great place for you to, you to help us. And, and so you compile those and then we could pick one of those and try to find a way to find and improve the help for that plugin. So questions so far, or are you okay if I go on and, and try some more steps? Um, I, wanted, I wanted to ask about the resources. Uh, we are getting the information from the, like for instance, we just uh, modify an existing um, guide. And I don't know, we are getting the modifications from all, is it's all in our head? <laughs> Ah, good, good, good question. Right. So what, what changes should you be proposing? Right. Is I think is what you're asking. What, what should you suggest yeah. as the improvement for something? Yes, exactly. Good, good question. Okay. So, so what the first step for me was just insert something that describes an existing, an existing thing that isn't already described. So if, let's take this example right here. If we can find a way to describe Boolean param with more text, that's already helped. Even if the description is, is flawed or imperfect because it shows we found it and we could put some text to, to describe it. So this, this step right now is not worried about you contributing your change to the Jenkins project yet. This is just you finding it, showing you can find it. And then we can talk about, okay, what does that mean now that I found it? Does, does that help? Yes, yes. So, so we're in this and this step, we're not actually worried initially about, oh no, I take it back, I'm wrong. The goal here really, so when you, when you get it, when you get something ready there, we, we should talk about what text you put there because then it's a good place for us to have a conversation about how do we describe this? Let's, let's do, should we do one together or would you rather find it yourself and then we, we take, it, take, it ourselves, you take it yourself? Well, we still have some time, I guess we can take an example. Okay, great. All right. That is still showing. I wanted to see, I've, I need to do a little bit more looking, just a minute. Because, ah, oh, this, yes, found it. Thank you. Okay, good. Now I know better. All right. So you remember I'd asked, how do I find the online help for my specific set of plugins that I have loaded? So here, notice I'm now on the snippet generator. The snippet generator shows each of the steps I can choose, like build. This steps reference on the left is the equivalent of the pipeline steps documentation, but only for the plugins that are loaded in my Jenkins. So this is custom to me. And so when I look here at build, notice it's got these little expand and contract things. When I look at build here, it will show only the things that are available on my Jenkins installation. So for example, if I want to take a, the build, the build step, and I want to provide better description for the job parameter, this is where I could find it. I can go look for that in the, in the text. Now, if I want to better describe a credentials parameter, uh-oh, nothing here that tells me how to find it. I'm gonna have to go looking to see if I can find how to locate a credentials parameter. Because I don't have the easy thing of grabbing some text from it already, or 
yeah likewise run so the the easier ones to find are things that already have some text that i can i can go find that otherwise i have to go looking in source code to locate the these other pieces that i can point to so maybe it's best if rather than me trying to do that search here in the 10 minutes we've got left let me take an action item to prepare myself for that kind of exercise so that we could do it the next time we meet and then we talk through it there because I'm not sure that you watching me go searching for that without me having thought first about how to do the search most effectively will help help either of us. So let, let me ask back to you, uh, Sophia and Afi, are you okay if rather than me attempting to go find those pieces that I was looking for, that rather we'll do that in our next session so that I can I can take you on a tour to show you how to do that. Yeah, that's totally fine. That's okay. That's okay. Great. All right. Yeah. So so the kinds of things that that let's take. Um, yeah. So here. Yep. Yeah, good. The kinds of things, for instance, that I would expect to see here. Actually, maybe, maybe let's do, let's do something a little different. I'm going to show you a, a slightly different way of doing it that may help us see it even more readily. So this is another step that in this last 10 minutes that it may help you even more than having, having me show you how to search. So if I want to run the, my copy of the, the plugin that I just built, there's a shortcut technique I can use to run it. And, and that shortcut technique actually uses Maven. I'm going to do it right here. Maven minus D Jenkins dot version equals two dot three, three, two dot two. Uh, HPI colon run. So the reason, the reason I'm showing you this is when I uploaded my plugin, that newly built plugin into my big Jenkins, it's got an awful lot of other things in it. Whereas if I run it this way with just this Maven command, it will load just the build plugin. And having loaded the build plugin, it keeps my view of things much simpler. So let's, let's let this run for just a moment. And this technique may help the two of you as well, because it's entirely local to your Jenkins system, to your, to your Jenkins environment. Okay. So just like today, you run Java minus jar Jenkins.war. This is the equivalent of running Java minus jar Jenkins.war. But oops, and guess what? I have something already running on port 8080. Now I have to figure, I probably have a Jenkins running on my computer, don't I? Yeah, I think I was going <laughs> to say the same thing. <laughs> so you have to probably stop that and then run it on probably a different port or something. Well, let's, yeah, let's try this one. Minus D jetty dot port equals 9090 and see if this works. Because I would like to not have to stop my Jenkins. Much better. Okay, so it's, it's acting like it's okay. So now instead of going on that, I'm going to go HTTP localhost 9090. And it says, oh, whoops, 404 not found, but try clicking slash Jenkins. Come on, come on, you can do it. And here is my Jenkins with that plugin installed. And the number of plugins that installed is quite small. Whereas on my installation, I have like 100 or more. This is maybe 30. And now if I look at pipeline syntax,
and the steps reference, the steps reference here for build is much smaller. These are the things that are provided by the build plugin and the plugins that depend on it. So, so that Maven HPI run thing that I did up here gave me a much easier and better development environment. So be, remember that as you're doing your work. That's super convenient. It, it, it is. It, I hope it will be better. Sorry that I didn't, I, I may even have it in the instructions. Let's see if I've got it in here. If not, it should be, if HPI colon run is not in here, it should be. It is not. Okay, so let me put myself a comment here to remind us that we need to help help new people that they should know how to use HPI colon run to, yeah, here it is, use, let me just put a comment here. Use Maven HPI colon run to see the plugin quickly. Maybe we just document it here. And sorry, the start thing I know is Windows specific. Um, Sophia, apologies that I'm showing a Windows specific command. What that really means is open that, open that page in a web browser. Thanks for your patience with today's, today's bumps. Any other questions before we close? Okay, um, hi, Mark. So just to reiterate, right, we are supposed to go through um, the steps and see if we are able to insert or make changes to it, right, on specific branches. Okay, okay. Yes, that's correct. So it insert a change into the Jenkins build plugin or build step plugin help confirm that you can see that change in your development environment on your computer. Right, exactly. So that's the step. And you can refer back to the, refer to this recording. It will probably take me at least a day to get it uh, beginning Friday because I'm, I'm kind, of, kind of tired today from not having slept enough last night. And then ask questions in Slack, don't be shy. when problems arise. Anything else before we end today? No, for me. Not for my end. Yes, all me. right. Thank you then, thanks, thanks to all of you. Let's go ahead, I'll, I'll stop the recording now.